everyone. Today we're on board a Conquest 60 fiberglass commercial vessel. Right behind me you'll see we've got the Fiat Cursor 16 marine engine. Uh, we're here on our sea trials for this one, which is the first Cursor 16 sold into a commercial vessel in Australia. Uh, sea trials went really well. We've ended up cruising at around about 14 to 16 knots, uh, at around about 16 to 1800 RPM. Uh, this particular vessel here weighs in a 35 tonne heavy ship, so she is quite a sizeable and heavy boat, um, but of course incredible in, in rough weather um, and really holds its own through any seas. The Cursor 16 you see behind me uh, currently is 260 hours on the clock. I'll give you a bit of a walk around here and show you around the engine. Installation, this one here is hard mounted, as you can see here. We've got a new PDO bracket around the front, which contains the power steering pump. We've got a deck wash pump mounted below. And of course we have the main hydraulic PDO here. The Cursor 16 is similar to its little brother, the 13, runs a uh, serpentine belt, which services all of the different functions on the engine, including freshwater pump, uh, engine alternator, and a couple of idler pulleys there. Um, as we come around, you can see just how much room we have in this particular vessel. Um, just because I'm here, this vessel is running a twin disc uh, electronic throttle system, which is still around to some manual cables for both gearbox and engine. Of course, the Cursor 16, being a common rail fuel injected engine, can accept a uh, electronic throttle input via CAN bus or voltage, uh, 0 0.5 to 4.5, but in this instance, we're still running cables. Uh, here you can see twin spin on oil filters on the port side of the engine, provision here for a hot water system which isn't actually connected uh, in this particular instance. Gearbox oil cooler comes as standard, so we've got the two lines of the gearbox, which really means that it is just such an easy uh, installation and doesn't require any further coolers further back uh, on the motor or on the gearbox actually. As we come down, we have water outlet here, we have a couple of diverts, this top one here heads to the cooler for the pot winch for the hydraulics. We've got a little stern tube line tucked in down here and then the main line out to the wet exhaust riser. Standard running a 10 inch wet exhaust out of this, uh, which is the small dry section there which you can see is very well heat blanketed. Uh, we have a twin turbo arrangement on the Cursor 16. So one side mount here and you can see one at the rear there as well. Uh, the sea strain is currently sitting at the rear here which tucks underneath the engine and we'll, I'll show you around the other side in just a minute. We're running the original uh, Nagata actually, 2.5 to 1 ratio gearbox still uh, in this particular vessel. The Cursor 16 is an SAE 1 bell housing with 14 inch flywheel so it was able to bolt on uh, directly with no changes and that's actually most, uh, most engines do run an SAE 1 bell housing in this particular size so it does mean that in most instances can reuse existing gearbox. Exhaust system exits down here and then out of Sponson out the left hand, out the port side of the vessel. We're direct coupled on the shaft there, which uh, off the top of my head is a three inch shaft front here. We have the heat exchanger, which is coolant in the top header tank here. Beneath is where we have the tube stack uh, for seawater flow tucked in there. We have sacrificial anodes front and the rear tucked in there as well as another one just here. It's a very short run of seawater. So the pumps are actually tucked up and underneath just there. They are a bronze impeller seawater pump so they do not require regular maintenance. From there the seawater tucks straight through this pipe straight in and through the intercooler. So there's your boost pipe coming in across there and up into, into the intake manifold. From there it has a very short run up here the seawater through the cooler and then back down through this fuel cooler here before it tucks all the way around underneath the engine there and around to the other side. Whilst we're under here you can see just how shallow uh, the sump is on this particular engine. Whilst we're here, Bosch ECU tucked up nice and high on this particular motor. Down here is the potentiometer that comes as of standard. Therefore Again, showing that you can still accept a mechanical input. The Bosch high pressure fuel injection pumps just there. And we have on the rear here, we run a K&N filter. And then we have a spin on fuel filter there. Plus behind me, the Iveco FPT primary filter, 
with the hand primer pump on top. Cursor 16 weighs in at just under 1700 kilograms dry weight, so plus fluid and a gearbox, you're weighing in total about two tonne universal. Um, with current AMS requirements of under 4% weight variation heavy ship, it really is important uh, that they you do stick with a similar weighted engine. And the Fiat Cursor 16 at 1000 horsepower, commercially rated for 1000 hours a year, really does fit that bill quite well for most instances, either pulling out a slightly heavier engine or pulling out a slightly lighter engine at lower horsepower and coming up depending on other vessel uh, suitable requirements. This here has been the Cursor 16 1000 horsepower walk around. Thanks very much for watching and uh, if you're interested or would like to consult with THT about repairing your vessel, please get in touch. Thank you.